So oaks in general make pretty good crop trees across a wide range of landowner objectives. And we're going to show you the five very common oaks, certainly in the Appalachian Mountains, but largely up and down the whole East Coast. There, there are some others that might get picked up depending on where you're at. Uh, but here in the central southern Appalachians, these five species certainly make up the predominance of oak species as you'd be looking down like in an airplane view. So first, there's two broad categories of oaks. There are what are called the white oaks and there's the red oaks. And there's a really easy, good distinction between those. All of your white oak species, and we're going to do two of them today, uh, and we're going to keep this simple. I think you'll be able to do this on your own. They all have lobes that end rounded like your fingertips. And this happens to be called white oak. It's, of course, in the white oak group. The red oaks, on the other hand, all have leaves that end in a point or even a fine little bristle tip, a little little hair. Okay, so mm -hmm. that makes them red oaks versus white oaks. And in both of these groups, there's a whole bunch of species all around the world that fall into one of those two categories. Now, your five common oaks that you're probably going to see on your land, two of them are white oaks, and those are white oak and chestnut oak. Three of them are in the red oak group, and those are nicely northern red oak, but then we also have a species called black oak, and we have a species called scarlet oak. All three of those are in the red oak group. So those five trees, as we walked, we walked around here this morning, every oak tree we saw, I think every one, was in one of these five, right? And as you move into different parts of your land, uh, there may be more northern red oaks, and other places there may be more white oaks. So let's take them in order here. White oaks probably going to be one of your most easily identifiable species. And even if they're somewhat big trees and you can't reach the leaves, you can do like what we did, and we looked around for leaves on the ground, and sometimes you can even just be picking up old, old leaves looking for, for them. The white oaks have very long lobes, kind of like finger length, ended with a rounded turned over point, are kind of whitish underneath. Really different than that, the other white oak that you're going to see is called chestnut oak, and it has very, very shallow lobes, like rounded molars or teeth, barely go in more than a quarter of an inch. So very, very distinctly different leaf. Okay, chestnut oak, white oak. Both of those make great selections if your objective is wildlife, some of your bigger ones like bears and uh, white-tailed deer and turkey and squirrels. Both of those are good for that because they have a really, really good acorn that wildlife like to uh, consume quite readily, actually. And some of them, white oak, for example, is and same with chestnut oak. Uh, if you treat them properly, you can, you can eat them. Uh, both of them also are very good for timber. Uh, sometimes they're cut and they won't even separate chestnut oak from white oak. Other times they will, depending on your product class. Like for barrels, they want white oak, Quercus alba. So you may need to know, like, again, what is my objective? Is, am I trying to get wood uh, for barrel production? Uh, then you'd want to be selecting for this white oak, Quercus alba, and not chestnut oak. If you just want any white oak, either of those two are good rounded lobes in both cases. The red oaks, uh, it can get a little more difficult, but first, just remember, they all end in the sharp point and the bristle tip, and you've got some sort of red oak. There's only one of the three that you really kind of want to avoid as a crop tree, and I think we'll be able to tell that separated from the other two. So probably the best of the three is northern red oak. And it's got the most numbers of lobes, when you count these, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it's got 10. Uh, typically books will say like 7 to 11, right? So it's got the most, and they, on average, trees vary a lot, right? On average, they go in, the lobes versus the sinuses, they go in about halfway to the center of the leaf, if you see what I mean there.
Okay. Now, this is really, really good in, in the Appalachian Eastern U.S., red oak lumber. The majority of red oak floors are going to be your northern red oak, and people really want northern red oak if timber is your uh, primary objective. For wildlife, all of the red oak acorns, they eat them, but they're not quite as good. It's like a box of chocolates, and they're not, they aren't your favorite one, and you eat them later. But wildlife will eat them, but they would prefer white oaks. So again, you're always going back to what your objectives are. Okay, now closest probably to the northern red oak that people confuse is black oak. Now I'm going to hold this up, and you're going to think, how could anybody confuse these two? Okay, uh, there's, there's a black oak leaf. But the problem with the black oak versus northern red is black oak is highly variable. Uh, the leaves can be really long like this, long, long, long fingers. Again, with the bristle tips, you know you're in the red oak group. Uh, but here's one thing that you can kind of count on generally with the leaf. Fewer lobes with the black oak. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe and seven on the end there. Many, many more there. And northern red oak's much more uniform looking like that. And look, if you're listening to this, I can understand it. Like, how am I going to tell these apart? Here's the deal. It doesn't really matter too much. Both of these make really good lumber, very good uh, timber. And if you cut black oak, it would go in the red oak pile for the floors, right? And uh, red oak grows a little faster, a little straighter, but you wouldn't do too bad with that. The one you got to be careful about, and you're going to see very clearly why, is a species called scarlet oak. And here's what you look for. Again, you got your bristle tip, so you're in the red oak group. It's not white oak or chestnut. They have lobes and sinuses, the hollow part, that go almost all the way in to the mid vein. Like if we compare the northern red to the scarlet, you can see that. So when you see these leaves that are pinched almost into the middle, you have a scarlet oak. 